Good morning, everybody. Ooh. There we go. Oh, rainy day. Good morning, good morning. We're going the fast way today. I just want a nice, easy drive. I don't want to well, turn in the steering wheel and stuff like that. How are you? All right? I apologize for this rather sort of up your nose angle. It's just where I've got the uh, camera, the uh, phone holder. Yeah, so, how's it going? Oh, he needs to get out of the way, doesn't he? That Tesco's van. Let me just roll down my Mark 1 window and use my meat-based window uh, mirror retractor. So, I had to jump out of bed this morning to cancel a patient. It's weird, isn't it? It's uh, because of our system of... Um, charging patients before they attend and I had a patient who rang up and wrote this essay and this, you know I mean basically we have a field that says uh, you know why do you want an appointment like is it for a checkup or a uh, whatever a scan and polish or and then there's a box that says other you know and in the other this uh, bloke had written a essay about how he'd been to an NHS dentist and he he didn't like the dentist and uh, all his teeth were crumbling and the dentist had done him a NHS dentist had done him a crown at the front and the crown wasn't the right shape and it, it was too big and it was the wrong colour and he didn't like it and uh, so he wanted to come and see me so I could talk him through all these various options and uh, so we made him an appointment and then sent him our customary invoice for 45 quid, which is what we charge for of what is basically a damn good first patient checkup. We don't charge any more if it's the first time that you've had a checkup, even though obviously more work is involved. No, not only do we have to chart your teeth, but we have to you know, do like a full uh, screening, including x-rays sometimes which we don't charge extra for um, and, and spend more time going over a diet and uh, plaque control and uh, you know get a, a medical history for the first time which may be quite complicated and uh, and uh, have a chat with you and sort out all your anxieties going back 20 years everything you want to tell us about coming to the dentist you know how you've got here, your journey, we have to listen to your journey. Uh, anyway. Anyway, he didn't pay the invoice, and so um, I reminded him yesterday, if he didn't pay the invoice, he was gonna get his appointment canceled. Uh, so I reminded him on the Tuesday, he was gonna get his appointment canceled on the Wednesday, and, and you know, by this morning, he still hadn't paid, and he's doing it at 9.45. Now, there's two ways of dealing with that. You could either think, well, I'm not going to get that 9.45 appointment booked so we might as well leave him in there and then uh, if he turns up then fine you know you could always say oh you know I decided I was going to pay in cash on the day or something but uh, uh, but I've cancelled it because uh, it's going to make me look like a right idiot having sent him four reminders and a, per, and a sort of, and a one one off text, bespoke text, saying please pay or your appointment's going to get cancelled, and then it doesn't get cancelled. Do you know what I mean? It's like uh, you can't do that because what's going to happen is it's going to get become known amongst your patients, not not generally, but amongst the patients of a certain type. That type being the type that doesn't pay invoices, that uh, they don't have to pay because uh, they're. Uh, their appointment won't get cancelled. You know. 
so uh, I, I decided to go the other route and cancel the invoice and then uh, then if he I mean we know for a fact that he, he's received an email uh, it takes some time for a text to go through <coughs> but um, let me just get around this bloke why not why not inject a dose of adrenaline into my morning? Seeing as he seems to be driving along in second gear. That was the Friends theme tune, wasn't it? That's what he is. He's one of the Friends, stuck in second gear. So anyway, so if he comes in, then we've got the, still got the option to see him but we don't have the obligation. And to be honest with you, you can sort of get a sixth sense about which patients are going to be problems, you know. He's, uh, you know, this response to our pre-COVID assessment was, was a bit of a whiny, a whiny response about how he feels that uh, dentists are treating him badly. And I'm sure they are treating him badly, you know. Uh, but um, there's a certain certain person that sort of thinks that uh, the council should send someone round if they get a dandelion on their lawn. And I just got a sense that he was one of those sort of people. And besides, what you know, what am I going to be able to do? I should say to him, yeah, okay, you've got to give up cakes, biscuits, and sweets. You've got to chill up a disclosing tablet two or three days a week and, and get to the point where you're pretty well plaque free zone then uh, come to see me and I'll do a ton of root treatments and post crowns you know I mean in practice that never happens you know it never happens it, you know you might they might scrape together or borrow enough money to have one thing done say one post crown done or something and just replace, let's say we just replace his front crown and uh, and uh, you know give him some diet advice and brushing advice and that free of charge but in practice it just doesn't happen like that he's uh, I think he just wants to come in and he ideally wants to come in free of charge uh, to tell me what uh crap set of teeth he was born with but I'm not you know I'm not in the process of reversing time I'm in the process of uh, fixing teeth now I don't want you to think and it would be easy to think where are you going there's a roundabout right in front of you and obviously not your disc brakes to, to pay to repair I mean, I'm not slow on these roads, but I'm, I'm out maniac by, by most of the maniacs on this road. That's really why I don't like driving on it. Let me just probably wing her out. It's not illegal to drive with it in. It's not sensible to drive with it in. Technically, you only need to have one rear-facing mirror, and I've got one. So now I've got two. No, it's not that I'm unsympathetic to him. It's just that, let, let's take another example. I had another lady who come in, very nice lady, hairdresser, obviously concerned about her appearance, went to an NHS dentist, you know, a particularly crap one. Not, not that there's any particularly good ones anymore. In fact, they're all particularly crap around where I am. Had a crown done and uh, it got loose, she said a while ago. She sensed it was loose a while ago, and now it's fallen off, right? And I looked at this crown, and it's not been done in accordance with any of the principles of crowns that I was taught. Uh, either you, you build a tooth up, file it down, and, and put a crown like a crash helmet over the top so it grips the edges, or, or if you've got no edges to grip and no prospect of building it up, or it's root-filled, 
you make a slot up the inside of the tooth and um, make a crown on a post like a pin that fits up inside the roux and then that holds it on but this they, they've done nothing they've done neither the, the previous dentist they sort of root treated the tooth titivated it a bit and and, and taken an impression and, and effectively stuck a crown on what was a flat root just one flat surface to another flat surface and I assume that they're um, relying on the, the glue you know the bond in the same way as you glue two bits of wood together with wood glue the bond between the uh, the two bits of wood is actually stronger than the um, is stronger than the bond within the wood you know if you pull it apart then what you tend to do is you tend to splinter the wood rather than rather than pull the bond apart but dental glues are not for the most part they're not like that they do rely they are they originally relied completely on mecha mechanical retention and uh, which is like basically physical interlocking of the parts and now um, uh, they still rely on uh, some degree of uh, mechanical uh, design. You just cannot paint, paint a bit of glue on a crown and paint a bit of glue on the tooth and slam the two together and expect them to arrow die each other together. It just doesn't work like that. So crowns are, uh, you know, you chew on them too hard and for too, too long every time you swallow you put your teeth together that's how much work they get so so of course two years later it fell off now when I was a young dentist I went to a party and I remember it very well because uh, I've been told that uh, we, we'd, we'd been invited as sort of dental students to a a party of an actual real dentist, you know. It's a bit like a solicitor's uh, apprentice getting invited to a, a party at a top barrister. And uh, we went there, and I remember it was a really misty day uh, or a misty evening, and it was misty to the point where I couldn't see the end of the garden. And coming from a relatively poor family, I sort of mistakenly assumed that they were going to live in a house which was a bit like one of the nicer houses on the estate where I'd grown up you know I didn't realize that they'd uh, what they'd done is they pretty well I think there was about half a dozen of these Australian dentists were only in the country temporarily for a few years and uh, all clubbed together to rent what was, what was in effect in my, my opinion sort of a stately home <laughs> and they were living in this uh, stately home and obviously not short of a bob or two because they had they were buying beer by the tray, you know, the 12 cans, 24 cans, whatever. And I, uh, you know, as I say, I came from a background where I used to think hard about buying a, a plastic ring pull of four, uh, or six, let alone, a, now you never bought a tray. You wouldn't have bought a tray of beer any more than you would have bought a tray of walnut whips, you know, you just, but no. So anyway, I went, uh, we went along to this party. I had a good time, apart from the fact I got involved with a, some stupid uh, argument with a nurse over with a, what was the better cricket team England or Australia which with hindsight was a, was a really stupid thing for me to do uh, because she turned out to be like a fanatical a fanatical Australian cricket fan and just wouldn't let it go you know just would not let it go just didn't realise it was a, a throwaway comment you know just a bit of banter and and so spent the rest of the evening uh, pretending to be offended and telling everybody what a, what a wanker I was and uh, and then constantly haranguing me with Australian cricket team statistics uh, that proved that they were like 10 times better than the England team uh, so that was a bit of a blowout but one of the uh, dentists said to me he, he said look you know you're a dental student he said that's great said, it's a great job all you've got to do is remember two things he said one is uh, don't cause any pain whatever you do whatever you do you know by which he meant will you do things properly or will you do things badly just don't be painful okay because the patient has not got a clue what's going on inside their mouth as far as they're concerned if it's painful it's wrong 
And if it's painless, you're brilliant, whatever you've done, you know, even if you've done everything wrong. And then secondly, uh, he said, make sure that your work lasts about a year or two. Because he said, a patient will be happy with a filling that lasts two years, even though they shouldn't be, uh, or a crown that lasts two years, but they won't be happy with a filling that falls out after two weeks or a crown that falls off after two months, you know. So, so basically what he was saying was don't, uh, you know, just um, do, do the minimum to make the job last uh, beyond the point at which the patient will be able to say, uh, I'm going to go, I'm going to put in a formal complaint about this dentist because this work was rubbish. And um, you've got to, um, you know, and, and they, they knew the market well. I mean, they really understood. It was a bad, it was, uh, well, of all the bad times for NHS dentistry, that was one of the bad ones because uh, just it was just after we joined the common market and there were a lot of dentists in the former colonies like Australia and South Africa and they used to get a working visa and come over and work on the NHS which at a time was a fee for item service so and with very little prior approval for the basic stuff so um, you know this was the days of uh, the so-called Australian trench and, and uh, Tom Mangold drilling for gold uh, and the drill and fill mentality and uh, if you had uh, very few scruples uh, or if you were uh, not working in your native country and and you're only over you know you're over in a target rich environment for two or three years the objective being to make as much money as you can before you go back to Australia um, it um, you know the system encouraged the worst type of dentistry and you know I don't even really <coughs> excuse me I don't blame the dentist I don't um, I blame them for their lack of uh, integrity you know I blame them for their moral their lack of moral uh, standards but I do accept that, that the system rewarded them for that type of behaviour and if you tend to work in a system If you tend to work in a system where, uh, you know, you're given the impression that a certain type of work is welcomed, and you do that type of work, I don't see how you can be criticised. Um, you know, I always said the NHS gets the type of work it, it commissions, you know, it spends its money, it sets the rules, you know, it's in total control of what it commissions, and so, it, and it gets what it pays for. Um, unfortunately, as I say, nobody from the Chief Dental Officer down has ever really worked in general practice. And so they don't really know how to get what they they could get and what they should get and what patients need. Or even what dentists want to provide, you know. Even uh, with our low morals, <laughs> we could probably provide a better service than the Department of Health can commission. So... Um, yeah, so you get to, a, I mean, there is a horizon at which point a complaint won't be forthcoming. And uh, that's not, not least because if you say to someone, as I did say to this woman whose crown had fallen out, who now needs like £900 worth of post-crown to rectify it, and, and is now marginal, whereas two years ago it would have been a reasonably um, competent job, you know, it would have been that the route would have been in reasonably good condition and now it's sort of in pretty average condition because it's been it's had a loose crown on it for two years and it's got a load of crap and everything underneath it for two years has been causing the root to deteriorate so I have now got a difficult job to do she's had to pay for the crown twice but when I say to her who did this you know can you remember the name of the dentist because uh, it arose in connection with the x-rays and I said I'd like to get the x-rays off your previous dentist can you remember who did this? And the answer is no, I can't, I can't, I haven't got a clue, you know. People are not really told who's doing the work at the time, a lot of the time, and then, and certainly two years later, they've got no, uh, you know, I mean, they probably could, 
if they wrote to the practice and said, can I have my notes? But they, they're like, they're just like, no, I can't remember who did it. Uh, you know, you're telling me it wasn't done properly. It's two years ago. Let's just think about what we're gonna do going forward, you know. Not think about how I could get only 300 quid back that I spent getting this crapped on by some, some dentist has already trousered the money and had it away like my Australian friends. Anyway. So that's, uh, you know, I mean, that, that flat crown, let's call it for sake of argument, the crown without the post, done, done without a post for, I know not what reason, other than possibly that uh, it would have added to the lab bill and uh, the dentist decided that he or she would rather have the 12 UDA fee and not have to net off a post. Uh, could save, you know, save a scrimp a bit. But I've seen everything, you know. I've seen, I've seen three unit crowns, uh, bridges done on two unit teeth. And now I've seen post crowns done without posts. Uh, there's no limit, I honestly believe. And I didn't used to believe this. I used to believe that there was a floor below which uh, dentistry couldn't sink. But I have now been demonstrated that I am incorrect and that there is there is no limit to how uh, rubbish NHS dentistry can become, you know. And they haven't even started making uh, crowns out of chewing gum yet or whatever else they're gonna, they're gonna come up with next. So, we've probably still got a long way to go, you know. Who knows? Anyway, it's not my problem. All right, lovely. Well, nice to talk to you. I'm off to work. I'll uh, see you soon. Bye.